Hello, I'm Pam Minnick, and welcome to The American Rancher. This week, we're bringing you another special program as we look ahead to the Superior Fall Horse Auction this coming November 3rd. We have an interesting guest on today's show, as well as some great horses to show you. Bob Morehouse is a rancher and horseman who spent a significant amount of time in the saddle on more than a few ranch horses. We caught up with Bob outside Weatherford. He'll give us some thoughts about ranch horses as well as share some stories on his interests and accomplishments in photography. Later on, we'll show you some superb consignments like these beauties. These things are coming to you on our Superior Horse Magazine. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Join Superior Productions as we team up with the 2012 World Championship Appaloosa Show and broadcast their World Appaloosa Sale live October 31st at 6 p.m. Central on SuperiorClickToBid.com. Log on to view live streaming video, bid and buy through Superior Productions. For more information and to register as a buyer, call us today at 800-431-4452 or log on to SuperiorLivestock.com. Welcome back to the American Rancher. We're talking about horses today and the consignments for November 3rd are stacking up nicely. Bob Morehouse grew up in the open country of West Texas and served for more than 20 years as ranch manager of the Pitchfork Land and Cattle Company near Guthrie. Bob's experience taught him the importance of a good ranch horse from a working perspective and that a cowboy and a horse make a team. Our situation is to breed a horse, not for sale, but we can pin the cattle that will suit our cowboys. But then on the other side of the coin is, yeah, we like a horse that will sell. We like a horse that can go to the ranch rodeo, ranch horse competition, or WRCA, anything, and compete as an all-around horse versus just the futurity cutting horses. And, and, they, and, and I love to watch cutting horse. I love to watch race horse. Uh, a good roping horse, but they're, they're too specialized. And that is more what the people want versus just a cutting horse or just a running horse or just a race horse or just a barrel horse, just a team roping horse. We want all of those and confirmation in one horse. Bob Morehouse says he will never leave ranching entirely and is actively involved in the Working Ranch Cowboys Association. Bob and his wife Linda reside in Weatherford, Texas, and have two daughters who live in the area. One question, how do you lazy? I mean, the big question. The second question, can I take him home and turn him out for six weeks, or put him in a stall for six weeks, and when I get on him, how is he gonna be? You just can't say, I guarantee, he, I guarantee him not to pitch. When you do, be weird, leery of that guy. Just, you know, he's not a, He's not a rancher, he's a horse trader, if he says that. Bob Morehouse can often be seen schooling a young up and coming horse. Responsiveness in and out of the bridle is important as Mohawk demonstrates. Some of the horses that's the hardest ones to start, meaning break, which don't like the term break anymore, start a horse. Some of the hardest ones to start, the ones that kind of kick you or look at you like this or buck, buck with the saddle and buck with you maybe first few times you're on him or uh, that's probably going to be the best horse. I've had horses, well I remember one in particular that I, Ray Hunt was there and helped to start him, helped to start a bunch of horses and I drug calves on him like the second day and you know that, I thought oh I'm going to like this horse, good looking horse. He was too gentle for me, I traded him off, he didn't, didn't have enough go. I'm, I'm going to go. I mean, I want to be able to control that go, but I want him to go when I say, let's go. And so, but that horse had been perfect for somebody just ride down the trail. The bond between cowboy and ranch horse is something special. Bob Morehouse knows the importance of a dependable mount to get the job done. Some people are a good horseman or a good cowboy. 
and it's surprising that you'd think they go hand in hand, but some cowboys just kind of like, well, we got my job done, turn him loose, and there he is, a good horseman. You know, he's training on that horse working the cow. If he's dropped off on a drive, he has to sit here 15 minutes before the drive starts. He's probably doing something to his horse in that 15 minutes to make him a better horse. Might be trotting him in circles, whatever. Get off, pick up his feet. But some cowboys are just cowboys. But uh, you actually depend on your horse sometimes to, in life circumstances like how fast can I run this hard to turn that cow? Can I depend on him? If he falls, I could be paralyzed. And and you get to know them. We treat them as animals, but we love them and uh, respect them. And you can get so attached to them. There's so many opinions on bloodlines. I'm not very good at pedigrees, to be honest. And I know what I like and it's, it's kind of usually proven pedigree uh, for a reason, for whatever reason. And, uh, but uh, there's a lot of good horses. But again, if you're, if you're buying a horse at a horse sale, you need to uh, do some homework and, and then find out all you can about that horse and watch that horse. You know, you think, that's the horse I want. But then you watch him, we do the demonstrations in the arena, roping or dry work or whatever. But watch him, and really, it's, it's important that you do your homework. Going back to what you can guarantee, you can't out guarantee them not to buck because we've had gentle horses and could take them out to Reno on a cool morning and run down there and rope a steer and he humps up. Well, all of a sudden, you got to put that in your catalog. You know, it just kills a horse, even though it's a gentle horse. But you can't guarantee some things like soundness. And that's, everybody should guarantee soundness. And that is more what the people want versus going to maturity, unless they're just a cutter. But if you just want a good using all around horse, you need that horse that we, the ranchers, look for. During his pitchfork days, Bob Morehouse developed a love for photographing the ranching way of life and the people who live it. I saw things that I wanted to capture. First, it was, we had a lot of wild turkey at pitchforks, and I, uh, I just wanted to take a shot of some wild turkey. Then I thought, you know, the Western stuff is what I know much better than the wildlife. And I thought, uh, I need to be taking Western stuff. Started carrying my camera behind my saddle. I really think I have a talent in seeing the light and, uh, composing things, and not my ability, but my uh, being able to be with real cowboys, real situation, and know how to handle my camera and still be a cowboy. Bob Morehouse worked on the Pitchfork Ranch for 35 years, in which 20 of those years, he served as manager and vice president. Bob's images of life on the pitchfork became a resonating reflection of the energy and texture of ranching. I'm a, I like backlit, and sun's coming up, and sun is not poking in your lens, and it's kind of a challenge to get that a shot like that. The sun coming through, the dust makes it the red like that. Some people said, you know, what's on fire back there? Obviously, it's not a fire. That is literally the color that that you see through my lenses. And uh, that, that's exactly what I was seeing through my lens. And there's probably, but you can barely see some horses. All, there's probably 60 horses out there all together. Bob is an icon in the Western way of life and an enthusiastic individual who remains youthful by keeping a good horse around. He loves to contribute to the heritage of ranching and has a good young gilding in Mohawk. Coming this November 3rd, there's a great offering in the Superior Fall Horse Auction, and you can find out more by visiting superiorlivestock.com. When we return, we'll see some of the horses consigned, like these here. This is the American Rancher. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the American Rancher. Looking ahead to November 3rd, Superior has got some great all-around ranch and performance horses, including 40 consignments from 14 states, ranging from Oregon to Texas to Missouri to Alabama. Let's take a look at the offering. Dual X Breeze is a seven-year-old buckskin gilding, also known as Hondo. He's been used in Oregon on the Eagle Cap Wilderness as a ranch horse since he was a three-year-old. He has no problem crossing water and is good on the trail. You can shoot a gun by him or from his back. He was shown in the Oregon Rain Cow Horse shows as a snaffle bit and hackamore horse. Bar-Eyed Dutch is an eight-year-old buckskin gilding from Nebraska. This gentle gilding is great on the ranch or in the arena. He's been hauled as a steer roping horse, but you can also use him to head or heel. For ranch or pleasure, this horse has it all. Bo's Eternal Cherub is bred to Poco Lena Hickory, an NCHA money earning son of the legendary Dox Hickory. She is good with her feet, crosses water, can drag a log, open a gate or toss a rope. She has the mind, size, and athleticism to go any direction. She's an excellent mother and would be a good addition to your broodmare band. RG at 420, also known as Louie, is located in Missouri. He's an eight-year-old gray gilding, big and heavy, sound and gentle. He's a finished head horse that has been hauled to rodeos and jackpots for several years. He runs hard and has a lot of rate. Hot Shot Jesse is in Missouri, a nine-year-old bay gilding with a big hip and a pretty head. He's been used for ranch work and pinning. He is a finished head, heel, and girls breakaway horse. He's a proven winner that's been hauled to rodeos and jackpots. Hot Like Dasher is located in Missouri. Famous is a solid head horse that's been hauled to USTRC ropings, jackpots, and pasture ropings. He has a ton of speed, allowing him to get to cattle fast. Cat's Last Man is an 11-year-old sorrel gilding located in California. He's an all-around great gilding that's been used extensively in all phases of cattle work, including penning and roping. He's also been used as a pickup horse. Chili Chimina is a five-year-old sorrel quarter horse mare from New Mexico. This good-minded filly has a lot of athletic ability. She's been roping and dragging calves in the pasture. She's got a big stop and would really make a nice heel horse. DMR Blondie Silver is a four-year-old gray mare from Decatur, Texas. This pretty mare is the real deal. She's got more heart than most horses and will throw herself 100% into whatever you ask her to do. She's been hauled and ridden in the mountains of Montana. DMR Miss Silverbell is a three-year-old Palomino quarter horse mare they call June. She has so much potential and is a favorite on the ranch due to her willing attitude and gentle disposition. She naturally works off her hindquarters and has a big stop. DMR Silver Zandy is a two-year-old quarter horse mare. She has a sweet personality, is one of the first to greet you in the pasture. She works hard to do everything you ask her. You could leave her in the pasture for a month, pull her out, saddle her up, get on, and she'd be just as steady and reliable as the last time she'd been ridden. Jackie is a six-year-old quarter horse red roan mare. She's been used for everything and was ridden by a 15-year-old this last summer. She has sorted cattle, is very gentle, and a sure-footed horse, the kind of horse that will go all day. Keo's Wacky Wilbur is a four-year-old buckskin gilding from Campbell, Texas. He's well started and ready to go in any direction. He's been worked in the pasture, ridden a fence, and had 60 days of professional training. Leo Sassy Mika is a four-year-old quarter horse Palomino mare located in Minnesota. She's big, stout, beautiful, and a golden Palomino, used as a family trail horse, ridden in the woods, hills, and open pastures. 
She loves people and is one of the first to greet you at the gate. Marty is an eight-year-old bay quarter horse gilding located in Texas. This big guy is sound in every way. He's been used for ranch work for three years. Gentle and easy to handle, he was leased to a youth camp for the summer of 2012. New Cash Tonino is a 12-year-old AQHA brown gilding from California. He's an all-around great horse that does ranch work and roping. They call him Colonel. He's great in the pasture and the arena. He's a gorgeous horse to look at and has the disposition to match. P.T. Cowboy's Lady is a four-year-old quarter horse mare located in Colorado. She is ranch and arena broke and almost ready to go to a jackpot. Her breeding will speak for itself. This mare's dam has produced several good fast horses and her sire has proven himself with several money earners. She's roped both ends and has been to some brandings. Quick and Foxy Hickory is a two-year-old quarter horse mare from Washington. She's out of Poco Lena Hickory, an NCHA money earning son of the legendary Docs Hickory. Foxy was started this spring and is doing very well. She's ready to continue her training in any direction. Don't Bug the Colonel is a 10 year old Bay Tobiano paint gilding. They call him Bill. He and his owner have had many adventures and earned lots of awards in 4-H and local horse shows. They've also been quite successful in the APHA show ring. This colorful gilding was featured on the cover of the July 2010 Paint Journal. Silver Savannah, a two-year-old black quarter horse mare, is in Decatur, Texas. When she fills out, she will be one stout mare. She carries herself beautifully with a perfect headset, collects and extends her gates, and would make a great show prospect. They call her Sis. She's a sensitive horse that responds to the slightest cue. Zan's Gray Angel is a five-year-old gray mare located in Fort Worth, Texas. She's a good-minded, solid mare with lots of cow. She's been used on a cow-calf and yearling operation and can do all phases of ranch work. She has just started roping calves in the arena and has been trained on pole bending for high school rodeos. Snowball is an eight-year-old gilding located in Adrian, Texas. Snowball does it all. He's been used in all phases of ranch work, including dragging and sorting. He has roped cattle, including bulls. He has led wild cattle out of the rough country and has been packed in the Gila wilderness for elk hunting. Take a look at this new 2012 Elite Three Horse Custom Trailer with eight foot living quarters which include a cooktop, microwave, sink, fridge and freezer, stereo, air conditioning, and heat, along with a six-foot sofa sleeper. The November 3rd Superior Fall Horse Auction will be another great offering and includes some solid all-around ranch and performance horses. For more information, log on to superiorlivestock.com. Thanks to Bob Morehouse and all the consigners for helping bring you this Superior Horse Magazine. We hope you enjoyed it. That's all the time we've got today. To find out more about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, or check us out on Facebook and become our friend. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Pam Minnick. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.